No matter what math you're in, you're going to encounter factoring. And one of the questions I get asked a lot is, is there an easy way to figure out if my quadratic equation is factorable? So I want to start by saying every quadratic equation is factorable. The question you mean to ask is, is this factorable into real, rational answers? Uh, the opposite being an irrational answer or an imaginary answer. And yes, there is a way to find that out, so let's go take a look. So here's the first quadratic equation we'll play with, and this is in standard form, which means ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And this is the quadratic formula. And if I put my a, my b, and my c from this equation into these places in the quadratic formula, I will get an answer. It is factorable. The question is, is it real and is it rational? And that answer is found in this part right here called the discriminant. So let's find out the discriminant of this equation. So here I've substituted my b for my b here, so 18 squared, 4, and then my a is 1 and my c is negative 65. And if I go ahead and do that math out, that's 324 minus negative 260, a minus a minus is a plus, so, and that equals 584. If your discriminant is a positive number but is not a perfect square, that's the case here. The square root of 584 is approximately 24.17. Your answers are real, but they are not rational. If your discriminant were negative. Let's say this had been negative 584. Your answers are not real. You cannot have the square root of a negative number. And finally, if the discriminant is a perfect square, then your quadratic equation has real rational answers. So there's our equation pop that into our discriminant, and then let's do that math out and one more level. All right, 225 is 15 squared. This is factorable. Now, if you've done this much work, if you've already done the b squared minus 4ac, you might want to just continue on with the quadratic formula. That would look like this, and then you would work that math out from there in the following way. And then we would get our two answers and find that those are one half and negative seven. Or if you love factoring, let's go ahead and use the X method. Up top, we have A times C, negative 14. Down below, we have our B, negative 13. We're asking ourselves what multiplies to negative 14, adds to negative 13. A quick factor list shows us we're going to be wanting to use our 1 and 14. And since this is negative, it's our 14 that has to be negative. I think of it as sort of overpowering the other one. Now, I know because this coefficient of my x squared is not a 1, these aren't my answers. I'm not done. Now I write it out like FOIL. Firsts right there, 2x squared. Outside and inside, those are my coefficients I've just found. Plus 1x minus 14x, and then my last comes down. Now I'm doing factoring by grouping. If this is not familiar, click on this link. Take a look at this. I'm factoring an x out of these, leaving me with 2x plus 1 there. I want to get rid of this negative, so whatever I factor out, it's going to be negative, and it's going to be negative 7. And that leaves me with, because remember when I factor negative 7 out of negative 7, that means division. Negative 7 divided by negative 7 is 1. And now I'm going to factor these two things out. And that is my fully factored version, which leads me to my factors being 7 and negative 1 half, which is what we got when we did the quadratic formula. Okay, last one. I could throw this in my discriminant to check it out. Or I could go ahead and start with my x method because I see this has a coefficient of 1. So if it does work in the x method, it'll be fast and I'll be able to tell quickly. So in this case, I wouldn't throw it in the discriminant. I'd go like this. 
Top is A times C, negative 40. Bottom is negative 3. I'm going to make myself a quick factor list. So there are my factors. I All of these multiply to some version of 40. What's going to get me my 3? Right down there. 5 and an 8. And this is negative. So I need my larger of these two numbers to be negative to overpower that. Because this coefficient is 1, I'm all done. I don't need to do factoring by grouping. Those go right in there. But if I were to go negative 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 40, I would get the perfect square, 169, which is 13 squared. So once again, to summarize, b squared minus 4ac is my discriminant and... If b squared minus 4ac is a perfect square, I have real rational answers, or what we would classically say factorable, even though that's not the right term. If they're positive numbers, but they're not perfect squares, they will be real, but they will be irrational. There will be square roots involved. And if b squared minus 4ac is negative, then we have imaginary answers. Okay, so play around with that. Check out my playlist on factoring to take a look at some different factoring hacks. Consider subscribing so you'll know when I put out a new video. And as always, keep on mathing.